Hey guys, I'm back again with a new video, and in this video I just want to give you a quick overview of some of what I think are the most essential features in this alpha build of Magic Lantern for the Canon 70D, whether you were shooting raw video or not. These tools help you with exposure, focus, and color balance, and are often found in high-end cinema cameras or external monitors and are absolutely necessary in any situation. I'm so glad now to have them on my Canon 70D. This video will not go into the raw video functions of Magic Lantern, and I'll actually make another video looking at those functions as well as comparing some raw footage to standard 70D footage and also footage from my Sony a7S. I've already run some tests, and man does this raw footage look amazing! I previously made a step-by-step -step installation guide on installing Magic Lantern on your 70D. I'll leave a link in the description and also put an annotation on the screen now. Please watch that video if you are interested in installing Magic Lantern on your camera. Alright, so let's get started. Right now I have the typical Canon 70D live view mode on. In order to get to the Magic Lantern live view mode, all you have to do is toggle through the various screens using the info button. Just to be clear, when you are in the Magic Lantern live view mode, um, you can just press the info button to go right back to the Canon info screens in Canon live view. Okay, we are now at the Magic Lantern live view mode. You'll notice that there's really nothing nothing here. That's because you have to actually enable the Magic Lantern overlays first. So let's hit the trash button and click on global draw and select live view. What this does is enable the various overlay displays when you are using the Magic Lantern live view mode. There's a lot of great information here, including the time, the internal temperature of your camera, the file name, the uh, frames per second, how much memory is left on your SD card, what f-stop you're at, what the ISO settings and white balance settings are, the battery life you have left. Um, on the bottom left, there's the actual focal length of your, of your lens. So if you're lose, using a zoom lens, that value will actually change as you move the zoom ring. On the bottom right, there's a number that actually shows you the distance of the subject matter that's in focus, so that actually changes as you adjust the focus ring. Another thing that I want to show you real quick is that you can actually change the menu layout in Magic Lantern by pressing the menu button while in the Magic Lantern menu. I actually like the original layout better, so I'm just going to change that back. So the first function that we're going to take a look at is zebras. I'm sure you guys know what zebras are, but if you don't, zebras are a really helpful tool to help you set the right exposure for your shot. It basically paints stripes on the parts of the image that are overexposed or underexposed. Alright, so let's go ahead and enable zebras. You can actually press the Q button to go into the submenu for additional options. You can choose the color space between Luma, RGB, or Luma Fast. I just keep it simple and use Luma. You can also set the threshold for the zebras. I prefer mine to be set at 90% or 230, but I know some people like theirs to be higher. Colors get clipped at 100% or 255, so it really just comes down to your comfort level and how much striping you want to see on the screen. You can actually hide the stripes while recording, and you can also enable zebras for underexposure. So let's see what this looks like. As you will notice, there are no zebras on the screen, which means that the image is properly exposed. But if we were to say, increase the ISO to 1600, you'll see all the zebra stripes on the screen showing the parts of the image that are above 90% threshold level and that are very close to being clipped, meaning that you can no longer save that color information in post. This is a function that comes with my Sony a7S, so it's actually really nice that I can now have it on my 70D. The next function I want to talk about is focus peaking. This is another function that I've gotten used to on my Sony a7S, and it's a tool that I use every time I shoot, and I think it is extremely useful. What focus peaking does is that it highlights in nice bright colors the parts of the image that are in focus. No longer do you need to punch in, get focus, and then punch back out. You now have an easy way to be confident that you are focusing on what you need to have in focus. So let's go into the Magic Lantern menu and enable focus peaking. You can hit the Q button and set the filter bias, which are different modes that work best in a given lighting situation. I just keep it on balanced, which works well in low light and daylight, so I don't have to worry about it. I like to use the color magenta or red because these are nice and bright colors and I don't often shoot things with a lot of these colors. Okay, so you can see the magenta highlighting on the front of the guitars, as that is the area of the image that is in focus. If I go ahead and take it out of focus, you will see that the magenta highlighting disappears. And then as we bring the guitars back into focus, the highlighting gets stronger.
All right, so the next couple of functions that I wanna talk about are really common tools that are also used for monitoring exposure levels and that are typically found on high-end cameras and external monitors. Those functions are the histogram and the waveform monitor. So let's go ahead and turn these on. You can choose the color space for the histogram to either show overall brightness or the brightness of the RGB colors. I'm just gonna keep this on Luma to show overall brightness. We'll also enable the waveform monitor. You can actually set the size to be either small, large, or full screen. Let's put this on large. All right, so you can see that these are now overlays on the right side of the screen here. I'm really excited to have these on my 70D now, and these are really helpful tools to make sure that you have the proper exposure. As you can see, both are currently in fairly good positions here, but let's see what happens when we crank up the ISO. you'll see that you have a lot of color clipping and you'll need to dial back the exposure. Now let's go ahead and bring the ISO way down. Here you see that the image is now underexposed with the histogram all the way over to the left and the waveform monitor pushed all the way to the bottom. You know right away that the image is underexposed and that it needs to be adjusted. The next function I wanna look at is the vector scope. I'm sure you guys have seen a vector scope before and understand how it works. It is a really helpful tool in assessing the color balance of your shot. You can make sure that you have the proper color balance that you are looking for, or you can also determine whether your image is too warm or too cold, or if there's something strange going on color-wise that you need to look into before you get home and you find out it can't be fixed. Up next is the false color function. This is a really helpful tool to evaluate the exposure of your image. Basically how it works is that it assigns certain colors to various luma levels, so right away you can get a really good sense of what is going on in terms of exposure, so that you can adjust the exposure as necessary. There are different palettes to choose from, and here we have the Marshall palette, which shows the most detail and displays the darker parts of the image in blue, and then gradually increases in brightness to the red colors. There is also a palette for green screen which is really helpful in order to ensure that your green screen is evenly lit, which is an extremely important step in getting a proper key. The next feature I want to look at is the magic zoom feature. This tool puts a small magnified inset box on your live view screen to assist you with focusing. I don't use this function as much as I use focus peaking, but it's another great tool that Magic Lantern makes available to you on your 70D. You can adjust the trigger mode from always being on to only when you press the punch in button or when you move the focus ring. You can adjust the size to be small, medium, large, or full screen, and the position on the screen. You can also adjust the magnification. So let's see what this looks like. As we move the camera, you can see that it magnifies the image where the box is located, which allows you to nail focus much quicker than punching in and punching out. The next two functions that I want to just mention briefly is the crop marks function and the ghost image function. These functions help with framing your shot. Magic Lantern lets you use custom crop marks or grid lines to help frame your shot. I don't really use this function all that much, and I generally prefer to just use the 3x3 grid already available on the camera. The ghost image tool is actually pretty cool, but I also don't see myself using this all that often. What it does is it overlays a low opacity photo that you have taken over your live view mode. This helps with framing your shot or aligning it with a previous shot, and it can also be used for panoramas. Okay, the last function I want to talk about in the overlays menu is something that helps with exposure, and that is the spot meter tool. What it does is it places a spot on your live view mode and tells you the brightness level at that point. You can move this spot around the environment you are shooting to check in real time the brightness levels of those areas. It is a fairly small overlay, so I usually just leave it on and it complements the zebras quite well. Okay, there are just a couple of functions that I want to mention real quick that are not in the overlays tab. Just to take a step back, let's look at the Magic Lantern menu generally. The Magic Lantern menu has the following tabs. Overlay, Movie, Shoot, Focus, Display, Preferences, Modules, Debug, Help, and Modify. The Modify tab is actually really useful, as it only displays what has been enabled in Magic Lantern. 
The next function that I want to cover quickly is the intervalometer. This is in the shoot tab and allows you to do a time lapse without needing to purchase external equipment. You can select the interval of time between each picture, and you can also select the start and stop trigger. And the last function that I just want to mention briefly is something that will make life a little bit easier, and something that you should definitely turn on, and that is the config autosave function. Config autosave is located under the preference menu. What this does is that it saves your Magic Lantern settings, so that when you turn your camera off and then go back in Magic Lantern, all of your settings will be saved. Alright guys, so that is it for this video. I thought it would be really helpful to take a look at what Magic Lantern looks like on the 70D and also provide an overview of some of my favorite features. Again, I will make a separate video discussing RAW and comparing some RAW footage to standard footage from my 70D and also footage from my Sony A7S. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.